Are you very sure? I hope so. Be very sure. And only you can do that. Nobody can do that for you. Um, to be very sure. All right, if you will, please uh, take your Bible, turn to two places. Numbers chapter 16. And that's where we will spend the majority of our time, Lord willing, this morning. Numbers chapter 16, and also one other place, Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17. So if you can find those two, you'll be pretty well set for the service. Sometimes we look at a lot of other verses and we won't be doing that as much this morning. I might go to a couple others, but... But if you can get to those two, Jeremiah chapter 17 and Numbers chapter 16. Anybody want to start us with a praise to the Lord? Anything? Something good? Brother Tim? Amen. I'm looking at the teens while you're saying that. Would any of you second the motion? Okay, good, good, good. All right, Nicole. Amen. Amen. I know Nicole's been praying for a different job. You know, when she has three kids and working on crazy hours, uh, so that was a big thing with the hours, right? And uh, so praise the Lord. That's wonderful. Amen. Yes, ma'am. I praise the Lord on my family's healing. Amen. Yes, amen. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. God is good to us, isn't he? Amen. All right. Uh, if you will, please first look at Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17. And familiar verse to many of us. Um. But in verse 9, verse 9, well, look, look at verse 8 real quick. Uh, verse 7, let's just look at there. Okay. It says, uh, blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, whose hope and whose hope is in the Lord is. Okay. Um, and so we'll see a big contrast here. Verse 8 says, for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see uh, when he cometh. Um, or also we would say shall not wither, right? Um, his leaf also shall not wither. Uh, but her leaf shall be green and shall not be, uh, and shall not be careful in her, the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. So that is a comparison of the person that trusts in the Lord. Okay, um, verse 9, it, what it's talking about, we don't trust ourselves or don't trust our, um, our heart, if you will. Um, it says, for the heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And then verse 10 says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins. Even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doing. So if you trust your heart and you just obey your heart, you're going to do certain things, and you'll have to face God for what you've done. Or if you trust the Lord, you'll, do, you'll go a different path, guaranteed. And you'll face the Lord for what you've done. And um, so if you will, please, 
uh, turn to Numbers chapter 16. Numbers chapter 16 is an incredible illustration of what we just read in Jeremiah. Uh, as I read Numbers chapter 16 again, it's, it just, it's incredible to, to see how people reason, how people justify things or think, or how they can drift away from the Lord so quickly. Or maybe they, uh, as we heard this week, maybe they were never there. Um, but one thing I realize, and we, we realize, is that people are, are always the same. People have always been the same. Um, it, it doesn't matter where they live in the world. It doesn't matter the conditions. Now, conditions can groom you, and sometimes, uh, uh, you know, uh, in your culture or your, your opportunity of the flesh or your, your training and your thinking will... Um, bring out certain aspects, but people were the same, our hearts are the same, all people are the same, anywhere you go, at any time, and that's why the, the Word of God is for everyone, it's for everyone at all times, it always has been, and um, in, Jer in Numbers chapter 16 is an incredible illustration of what we read in Jeremiah, and there are many other verses like that as well. Uh, so let's go to the Lord in prayer as we begin. Father, please help us today to uh, um, just see where we are, and, and uh, Lord, if you've brought us to a, um, a better place, we thank you for that, and if we see room for growth, the areas we need to uh, increase our trust in you, please help us today. Uh, but whatever is going to be done is because of you and through you, and we'll give you thanks for that. And most of all, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for dying on Calvary to pay for our sins, to provide a way to heaven. And uh, Lord, we give you glory for that. And, and God, if there's anybody here that's never trusted you as their own personal Savior, Lord, please, please help them uh, to do, do that today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, so Numbers chapter 16 uh, you know, again, as, as I read this and have read it, and as we'll look at this today, uh, people are just, people are the same. Brother Rich, what was the name of Brother Rich's Sunday school lesson? The smell can tell. I was like, that's backwards. You can tell by the smell, right? That's what it should have been. Anyway, uh, so I'm not, he said, I'm preaching on stinky people. And I said, I am too. That's awesome. Uh, because... People stink, right? Uh, and he was talking about his clothes and the Civil War stuff. And I remember he used to do that. He was really into that Civil War and going out there for days and sweaty. And he'd wear these wool suits. I went out there one time just to watch. And that was enough for me. I said, okay, I, I'm done. That was good. It was hot. And uh, anyway, it was great. It was wonderful. Uh, Numbers chapter 16. So we're going to read about this. So just, let's just follow along and... And look at the logic, look at the thinking of people as they deal with the Lord and, and what the Lord is doing in their life or has done. In verse 1 it says, Now Korah, the son of uh, Izhar, the son of uh, Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, the sons of Reuben took men. So basically, these three guys um, are the guys that started. They rose up before Moses. Uh, that's kind of like, it talks about, you know, you'll see later there. In other words, they rose up against Moses. And Brother Tim uses a term. I, used, I never knew, knew what that meant, but I, I, knew, I, I see what it means now. Brother Tim says they, they get bowed up. Is that sort of what that means? They, they get bowed up. Okay, um, so if you ever hear Brother Tim said you, you're getting bowed up, uh, that's what that means. You're starting to resist, right? And, um, but they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel 
Uh, this is not a little crowd, 250 princes of the assembly. Oh, did you mention baptism tonight? Okay, we're baptizing tonight. And um, so, um, so we're excited about that. Amen. Um, but uh, 250 uh, princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. In other words, these 250 are a representation of the people. These are high-ranking officials. Now, of course, there's a lot of people, but 250 High ranking, you know, now we would consider them like senators and governors and, you know, in their, in their situation. They were high ranking. They were over a lot of people. Uh, the Bible says they're famous, men of renown. They have reputations. Okay, now Korah, Dathan, and Abiram have these men behind them, and they rose up against Moses. Um, and then it says in verse 3, And they gathered themselves against Moses and Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you. In other words, you know, it's, it's too big for you what you have taken upon you. Seeing all the congregation are holy, even every one of them, and the Lord is among them, wherefore then lift ye up yourselves. Okay, so they come to Moses, and, um, and you know, there's this, this, this group of guys, and they come to Moses and Aaron, and, uh, and now they're accusing Moses and Aaron of taking on this themselves. Where they are, they're saying, you put yourself there, and the job is too big for you. Well, Moses has admitted many times the job is too big for him. But Moses didn't put himself there. And, but they're looking at it as Moses got this position and, and they said, well, you know, we all love God and, you know, we're all holy people and we, we can all do it. So uh, we want a piece of the pie. And um, the thing about this is they were... What we'll see later is they're totally in the flesh. This is a total, this is an absolute, there's nothing spiritual about the, what they're doing here. Now, serving the Lord is a spiritual thing, but they're thinking, um, and we know this for fact by what happens, that they are not, God is not in this at all. Okay, but they're looking at Moses, they're looking at his position and as far as we can tell, the only thing they want is position. Is position. And, and they have positions. I mean, these men are leaders, but they want more. They want more power. They want more control. You know, the Bible says in, um, don't turn there, in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, it talks about some, some bad people, and it says, desiring to be teachers of the law. Now, there's a difference between desiring to teach and to just want to be a teacher, to just be, just to hold an office or just to have a position. And it says, desiring to be teachers of the law, and listen to this, and understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. And that's exactly what these guys are doing. They say, we want to do what you're doing, but they have no idea what Moses does. They're seeing it. If I was him, this is what I would do. And that's what they want. Um, you know, years ago, we had a fella come here and almost don't want this recorded because I, I don't hate the guy. But he was a, a pastor of a very large church, I mean, independent fundamental Baptist church. And, and some things happened, and he had to leave. And, and this guy was, um, well, is a very big personality, just and very likable, and I like the guy. I mean, I have no reason to not like him, and I don't not like him. I, you know, if I saw him today, I mean, he's... 
He's a nice guy, and, but very big personality, like, kind of like Brother Rich. You know what I mean? Just, you know he's there. But very, and very likable. Very smart guy, very, and big. He's like six foot four, huge. He sat in my barber chair and like filled it to overflowing, just like, like I was just looking at it like, that's a big guy. And, uh, and uh, you know, and he had to leave his church for various reasons and wasn't pastoring anymore. And, um, and so he started visiting our church. And when I saw him, I was like, wow, I didn't know, I didn't know he lived down here. And I was wondering why he was coming. And make a long story short, um, we, had a, we had a meeting. First time, you know, he asked if he could talk with me. And I said, you know, sure, you know. So we went in, talked for a little bit. And um, he said, I'm thinking about coming here. And he said, but I want to know if I come here, can I, can I teach and preach? Now, nobody's, like, none of the men that teach and preach here have ever asked me that. Um, and that was just, I just thought that was odd, especially if he was, if he pastored, you know, the, you know, I don't know you. If you're brand new, I don't know you. And especially with what happened before, it doesn't mean you're out of the ministry, you know, totally forever. I believe that God wants to bring everybody back, but to come in right away with the first thing, can I preach and teach? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, we'll have to see how it goes. I don't even know if I like you yet. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know what I'm saying? You know, the, what we do, like, uh, you know, the holdings have, have been around serving the Lord forever and, you know, and had positions in churches and staff and stuff. But you know where they went when they came? They went to newcomers class. And they didn't say, well, do you know who I am? You know, I could teach this class. I mean, but a lot of times you just see, you see the spirit of somebody and it just something about that just, just made me nervous. Just really made me nervous. Because, because we want a servant spirit. We don't want an authority spirit. Um, and I'm not saying that's what he was doing, that he didn't feel like this was the place, I guess, for him, and they didn't stay. But, but there's a difference in somebody that wants a position and wants somebody, especially in a church, that wants a position or somebody that wants to serve and be a help and be used by God. And what I found is if you want to help and be used by God, it's just wherever, wherever you can. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have to be well, people know about what you're doing. And most of the things that are done in the church, people don't know about. It. You know, um, somebody was just saying how, you know, there's good people here today. And I said, yeah, look around. But most people don't know what everybody else does here. Anyway, but here we have Cora, Dathan, and Abiram. And so we see what, so what they're doing here. And they rose up before Moses. And so they saw a problem and they got up and they went and addressed that. Verse 4, it says, when Moses heard it or heard the, what they wanted, he didn't bow up, did he? He fell on his face. He knew where the help comes from. As we heard about all week, he went straight to God. He fell on his face. They rose up in the flesh. He fell on his face. And after that, verse 5, he spake unto Korah and to all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who is holy and will cause him to come near unto him even him who he hath chosen. 
So he's saying, guys, you know, it's not, we don't lift ourselves, God does this. If you, if you go back on the story of Moses, Moses never wanted to do it in the first place. Moses didn't want, to, didn't want the job, really. But God said, I'll tell you what to say. I'll give you, I'll give you Joshua. I'll, you know, I'll take care of this whole thing. And will cause him to come near unto him, talking about God, even him who he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him. You know, they saw it. They saw the position as lifting up himself above others. And Moses saw this position as he had to be close to God. He had to be in tune with God. He had to be in tune with his worship of the Lord. And Moses didn't choose this position of leadership. God chose it for him. And these are two different perspectives in verse 6, this dude, take ye censers, this is God speaking to Moses still, take ye censers, Korah and all his company, those 250, uh, and put fire therein and put an incense upon them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord doth choose, he shall be holy. Uh, he said, ye take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. See, they're seeing things from, from different. They said, Moses, you've taken too much upon you. And Moses said, I didn't do this. God chose, God chose me to do this. And he said, now you're getting into, you're starting to walk on dangerous ground. And you're taking up something upon you now that you're going to have to talk, face the Lord about. You know, again, they're trying to do, they're trying to, they're trying to accuse Moses, or they are accusing Moses of what they're trying to do now. They're, they're sitting back, they're watching Moses, then they said, now he just wants to be a big shot. He wants to be over everybody, and he wants to be in power, and he wants to, you know, and they're, they're, they're sitting back watching this, and they're saying that's what he's done. So now they're trying to do exactly what they're accusing Moses of doing. If you want to, take your, hold your place here uh, and turn to Romans chapter 1. You don't have to, but if you'd like to, I want to read a couple verses to you. Again, people have never changed. People have always been the same. And if we listen to our flesh and follow our heart, it's going to lead us down. He said, you're going to take too much upon you. And that's what we'll do. Romans chapter 2, verse 1, if you'd like to look at this. And again, if you just want to stay there in numbers and, and listen, we'll read it out loud. In Romans chapter 2, verse 1, we'll start there. Listen, and think about them. Think about these guys in Numbers. Korah, um, Dathan, and Abiram. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. In other words, this is what they're doing to Moses. For wherein... Thou judgest another, what's it say? Thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same thing. He said, when you're, when you're assuming, you know, when I used to work construction, and sometimes uh, I remember when the, uh, when the boss had to go, uh, you know, it was a hot day, and the boss had to go do something. And I remember guys saying, I know what he's doing. I know where he's going. He's going to go, you know, whatever. When, God, when they would do that, they were revealing what they would do if they had the opportunity. And many times when you, somebody's talking about somebody and, 
and accusing them of things or just revealing their hearts of what they would do if they were them and if they had that opportunity. That's exactly what Korah, Dathan, and Abiram did, and it's exactly what Romans chapter 2 says. Okay, let's read it again. Therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same things. Look at verse 2. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. Now, we're going to read about that in Numbers chapter 16. Okay? Verse 3. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same thing, the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? See, uh, they, they were publicly challenging Moses, God's choice. They were publicly challenging Aaron, God's choice. This was God's plan. They were doing God's work. And they rose up against Moses and Aaron saying, we don't like it. And we want to we wanna, we wanna be in charge. We want to step in. We want to do something different, as we'll read. And, um, hey, hey, we have a better plan and all this. And, they, and then they got a crowd behind them, and uh, now it's a problem. And Romans says, do you think you can do this and God not deal with you? So let's, uh, let's turn back to Numbers chapter 16, please. Now, let me say this. You say, Pastor, why are you preaching this? I don't know. I don't know anybody. There's nobody here doing this that I know of. So, I mean, it's for, I guess, if we meet somebody else and they have a problem. Okay, we'll just be able to help them. Uh, so, I mean, but uh, it's good for us to remember that God is in charge, though. Amen. Uh, look at this in verse 8. <clears throat> and Moses and Korah, Moses said unto Korah, Here I pray you, the sons of Levi. And he said, Now, listen, guys. Look, look what he says here. Seemeth it but a small thing unto you? He says, no, under, he says, I, first of all, I don't understand this because God's got you. I mean, you're already, you're already in a great place and God can use you in a wonderful way. And I don't, I don't understand where this is coming from. And why would you think that what you're doing for the Lord is a, a small thing? And you know what? When, when you start thinking that what God has you doing is not a big deal, uh, you're not going to be. You're not going to be. You're not going to be doing what God has you doing. I mean, you can't do it well. Right. Everything that God has people doing is a big deal. Amen. I've heard. I've heard mothers think that raising their children, all I have is my kids, and all I have time for my. That's a big deal. That's huge. I mean, just your family is a huge deal. And the people that God's given you, it's a huge deal. And don't, don't think that wherever God has you right now is not a big deal. And, uh, and if God wants to change you, let him do it. Don't try to work things out on your own. Um, but look what it says. Seemeth it but a small thing unto you that the God of Israel hath separated you. First of all, he's already pulled you out to himself from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself, to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister to them. You, th you think that's, that's not good enough for you if that's what God's called you to do? And he hath brought thee near to him. How many times did he say, God has brought you to a place where you're closer to him, and that's not good for you. And all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee, to seek ye the priesthood also? You don't see what God's given you as a big deal? Why would he give you more? If you don't love what God has you doing, why would he give you more? 
If you're not satisfied with, uh, as Paul said, to learn at whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. If you're not content where God has you, why would God give you more? I think the best thing, best place for a person to be is happy in the will of God before God ever does something else. The, the person that can't wait to get out of what he's doing to do something bigger, I don't think that's a good, a good setup. Um, look at verse 11. It says, for which cause, in other words, your desires, ye men, both thou and all thy company are gathered together against who? The Lord. The Lord. I mean, everything that they're complaining about is what God established. They've gathered together against the Lord. And what is Aaron that she murmur against him? So in other words, the rebellion is against God. Hey, listen, if you, com- if you, if you go to God, guys, about your parents, and you, you say, oh, God, I don't want my parents. And none of y'all would do that. That's why I'm saying this. Okay? God, I don't like my parents. Why would you give me my parents? Hey, there's a problem. God gave you your parents, right? And I, I know what that's like. I remember I wasn't saved I didn't know any better, but I used to complain about my life and growing up, and I didn't like it, and I wish I was born in another family. And I don't know if you've ever done that, but I, I, I used to do that. You know, my, I remember as a kid thinking, my childhood is terrible. We're poor, and we drive old cars, and we live in old houses, and we don't live like everybody else, and... I remember wearing clothes that didn't fit me because I, I went through a growing spurt. And I went to school one time. Well, these are good socks. And my pants were this tall. <laughs> and it wasn't a good day at school. And I went back home. I said, I'm not going to school anymore. And the kids are all making fun of me. And my clothes don't fit. And, you know. I wouldn't trade a thing now. Because everything that God has done in my life was for the furtherance of the gospel. People make mistakes, but God doesn't make mistakes. Hey, listen. uh, And they were in rebellion against God. Look at verse 12. It says in Moses sent to call or asked them to come up, Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, uh, which said, we will not come up. Who says you're the boss of me? We don't have to listen to you. We should be doing what you're doing. So we're not going to listen to you anymore. They got their group together, and they, they're, they're already starting their own thing now. We think we should be, we should be the leaders. We should, be, we should have uh, some of this authority. And who's Moses, and who's Aaron? And, and so Moses says, guys, come on up. We're not going to listen to you. Who are you? Pfft. Who put you over us? That's what they're saying now. Um, verse 13 is it a small thing that thou hast not thou hast brought us up out of the land look what it says that floweth with milk and honey now Trick, I mean, this is a little bit, you might have to know the story, but where did Moses bring them from? From bondage in Egypt. The place where they were slaves for 400 years and they were begging God to send that deliverer. And God sent Moses. And now they're saying, you took us out of the land of milk and honey. To... Kill us! 
They're accusing Moses of now bringing him to a worse place and, and, and actually desiring to harm them. In the wilderness, except thou make thyself altogether prince over us. Verse 14. Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey, or given us an inheritance of fields and vineyards. Wilt thou put out the eyes of these men? They're accusing Moses of horrible things. Number one, Moses didn't do it. God did it. God just had Moses tell them what God wanted. But now they're saying, you brought us out of a wonderful place to this horrible place, and it's horrible, and we're all going to die, and you want to kill us, and, and, uh, and now they're, they're, they're making it public. It's a public rebellion, and they have people behind them, and they're going against God. Hey, listen, um, we need to be careful about that. Our God-given authority. You know, Brother Beckham, Beckham uh, we, we went over that more last year, but God says you pray for them. We, we have to be in submission to them. Hey, um, you know, one time, and I've heard Brother Bowman say this too, but years ago, we had somebody in the church and they were, and, and, and I, I'm the kind of guy, I mean, I'm not a fighter. I don't like fighting. I don't, you know, some of y'all do. I, I'm not, I don't like fighting. I like, I like hugging. You know, that's my thing. I, I'm a hugger. And, uh, and I don't like it. And, and I, I truly try to love people. And, and, but we've had people leave the church that hate me. And all I've tried to do is be their friend and help them, and, but they hate me. And um, at one time, somebody was in, in my office, and they were giving me the, the what for and, and saying, that, saying similar things about that. And I said, listen, and I mean this with all my heart. That's, I still, I've prayed this prayer many times, but I, I wanted to pray with him. I said, okay, listen. If, and I said, listen, I'm only doing what God called me to do and what he, I'm really, I'm not, he said, you're a terrible pastor. And I said, I know that. I said, I'll be the first guy to sign the paper. Okay, if you want to start a petition, I'll, I'll sign it. You know, I, I have no problem with that, but, but I can't let you do what you're asking to do or want to do because I just can't. I said, listen, listen we'll settle this right now. If I'm wrong, I'm, I'm going to pray right now. And if I'm wrong, I'm just going to pray that God kills me right now. And if you're wrong, let's just pray that God kills you. And that way we'll know. He said, well, I, I, I don't want to, you know, we don't have to do all that. I was like, well, I was like, you know, what are we going to do? I want to, I want to, hey, listen, we just need to be, be doing the right thing. And if, if one of us is that wrong, then let's just get it taken care of now. Because I said, you know. Um, verse 15. Moses. You know what? Uh, let me just say this. And you, this is probably not, I shouldn't even say this. But, you know, I've read stuff that people say about, me and our church and some of you, it hurts. I mean, I can't, I can't help. I, I know I, I'm not supposed to take it personal, and, and, but, man, it hurts. I mean, I, I can't do it. I used to read that stuff about what people said about me and you. Probably more me than you, but, <laughs> I mean, things that are just not true. Right. They're just not true. And, um, and they hurt. And I have gotten mad, but I'm more hurt than I am mad. And there's nothing I can do about it. Um, 
Verse 15, he says, and don't get online and start looking, okay? Or right, just <laughs> don't do that. I shouldn't even have said that. So kids, don't go online because it's not true, most of it, okay? Uh, <laughs> Moses was very wroth and said unto the Lord, Respect not their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. And he said, I've never done the things that they're accusing me of. I've never taken anything from them. I've not, I've have asked them for anything. I haven't hurt them. I, I have their best interests in mind. And you see that many times when God was going to kill them. And Moses, and we'll, we'll see that later, that Moses would stand before them and, and be the intercessor when God was going to do these things. Okay? In verse 16, And Moses said unto Korah, uh, Be thou and all thy company before the Lord, thou and they and Aaron tomorrow, and take every man his censer and, and put incense in them, and bring ye before the Lord every man his censer, 250 censers, Thou also and Aaron, each of you a censer. And they took every man a censer and put uh, fire in them and laid incense thereon and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the con congregation against them uh, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto the congregation. So God showed up. So here you have Aaron... And Moses and those, you know, Aaron, uh, uh, Cor and all the other guys. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron. And right then I would be thinking, okay, I'm, I'm in trouble. Because, you know, you're having, you're having this, you're all offering to the Lord to see who God wants. And God starts talking to Moses and Aaron. If I was on the other side right then, I would be thinking, you know, maybe this is not good for me. Okay? Verse uh, 21, And God says to Moses, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. God said, that If you don't want to be zapped, get away from them. And they're listening to this. And they fell on their faces, verse 22, and said, Oh, God. And they start crying out to the Lord. The God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin? And wilt thou be wroth with the, all the congregation? Um. And verse 23, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from uh, about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Abiram. Remember, because they wouldn't leave their house. So they went down to them in their house. And the elders of Israel followed them. Verse 26, and he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men. So remember, they said, We're not going to talk to you, and we're not coming out of the house, and we're staying in our, you know, we're watching TV, and we don't care what you say. So Moses went down to their house, and he said, Anybody who doesn't want to be judged with them right here better get away from them. Then it says, um, verse 26, And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men. Um, now remember what they said they were? They said they were holy. They said, we're holy men. And God said, no, they're wicked men. They said, we're holy. We can do what you do. We should be doing what you're doing. We're holy just like you're holy. And God said, they're not holy. They're wicked. It says, touch nothing of theirs, lest they be consumed. 
in all their sins. You know, that principle is still true. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Right? Still true. Still true. Verse 27. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram on every side. And Dathan, Abiram came out. So they finally come out of their house and stood in the door of their tents, their wives, their sons, their little children. And you say, well, that's not fair. They're the guilty ones, but why are their, why is their family going to suffer? Hey, listen, that's still true today, too. If you get in sin, if you get involved in sin, you get away from God, it's going to affect more than just you. It's going to affect everybody that you touch. That's why God said, get away from them. Don't touch anything that they have. If you can get away, get away, because it's going to affect you too. And it's not fair. It's not fair. But it's just the fact that if you get away from the Lord, I guarantee you, you know, all these, all these kids are good kids. But I'm going to pick EJ since you're first. If EJ got, I want to ask you questions, but I don't know how I'm going to do it. Okay, but let's say EJ got involved. The man he he got he got on dope, and and God forbid this would ever happen. But if he got on dope and you know you know got on crack and started stealing stuff, and hey, listen, even though mom and dad are right with the Lord and his sisters right with the Lord it would still affect them right. heavily. Yeah. And you've seen it. Hey, your sin affects other people. That's right. Your sin can almost destroy other people. It's not fair. In the realm of fair, it's not fair. But it's what happens. So here we have... Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, they're standing at the door. Their wives, their sons, their little children. And um, we're going to stop here. But what we'll, what we'll see later will shock you. And I'm not talking about just what happens to them, but even some more things in the chapter. It's, after this, it's just absolutely shocking. But you know what? It's what people do. It's what people do. You know what? And, and let me just say this. If God's helped you and separated you and saved you, uh, all we can say is this, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. And hey, listen, I, and, and, and I think most of us would say um, we're not everything we should be. But praise the, Lord, praise the Lord, we're not what we used to be. It's by God's grace. It's not that any of us are any better than anybody else, but God came into our life one day, and he saved us, and he brought us to a better place. We give him thanks for that. Amen. Let's pray. Fathers, we come to you this morning. Lord, we're sure grateful for thy word. Thank you for this chapter to help us to see human nature again and what many of us could be or maybe even used to be. But God, we thank you for your grace and mercy upon us today. And uh, Lord, um, I know it's, it's actually kind of an ugly picture, but sin is never pretty. And Lord, help us never to be, um, uh, to get in a place where we deceive ourselves. That's why we read that verse in the beginning, the heart is deceitful above all things. You said in another way, place that there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. It seems right, it looks good in our own eyes, but if we would come to fear the Lord, 
we would understand that it's not us, it's you. And God, we understand that this only comes through salvation of the Lord to realize that we are lost and undone and in our sins and on our way to a, an eternal hell because of sin. But God, that you, you would do whatever you had to do to keep that from happening. And that you did it, you died on Calvary's cross. You paid for all of our sin and you offer it as a gift to us today. And God, for those of us that have trust, trusted you as our Savior, we thank you, we praise you for that. And Lord, if there's anybody here today that needs to trust you as their Savior, God, we pray that you'd help them with that today.